the dream of peace in our time in the Middle East died on Monday. This Monday May 14, 2018 was the day the last, fleeting remnants of that illusion finally died. Of course, the leaders of the Arab world are going through the motions of condemnation and anger at Monday's bloodshed. The octogenarian president of Palestine, Mahmoud Abbas, fresh from a trip to Chile where he was photographed kicking a soccer ball, called for a general strike and three days of mourning. How many days of mourning, how many days of rage, how many general strikes, have the Palestinians staged? The moribund Arab League called for an emergency meeting to discuss the situation in Gaza. Low would be a wildly optimistic description of expectations of the meeting. Saudi Arabia joined in the condemnation, but it was lip service. Arab condemnation is a debased currency. It counts for nothing. Riyadh, under the shadow leadership of 32-year-old Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, has made it clear its main concern is Iran. Bogged down in an unwinnable war against the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen, worried about the specter of growing Iranian power in Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon, the House of Saud views the once sacred cause of the Palestinians as passé. While they don't have diplomatic relations, Tel Aviv and Riyadh see eye to eye on far more than what separates them. Wars in Syria, Yemen, and Libya, an insurgency in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, the ever-present threat of a resurgent ISIS, economic woes, and political instability have all pushed the once-hallowed Palestinian cause into near obscurity. Today the Palestinians are alone, divided between bickering factions. There is still emotional support among ordinary Arabs for the Palestinian cause, but it doesn't translate into action. For now. The Arabs are distracted, while the Israelis live in what they call their bubble, life in a modern, fast-paced society that keeps them isolated from the ugly reality of a grim, decades-long military occupation. The more than two million Palestinians crammed into Gaza will not disappear or begin to accept their fate or forget the homes their grandparents or great-grandparents lost in what was Palestine. The Palestinians in the West Bank won't quietly accept their slow, relentless relegation to reservations hemmed in by walls and barbed wire. It might seem that nothing will change. For now. But nothing remains the same. A problem ignored is not a problem solved.